ladies and gents as you can see Microsoft has this new closed caption and they call it live closed caption so now you'll have closed caption on my videos when I do them and you see it's pretty accurate it has not missed a beat even if I go da da do that day it should be able to pull that up okay but it didn't actually do that but it did all right you know what I'm saying okay Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen, ladies and gents, I have something I need to do, need something to tell you all about it. I have been up since 1 o'clock in the morning because things have been calling through my mind. And my mind be like, oh, I wish these things would stop going through my mind because every little thing I do. Okay. With that being the case, you know what? There is, I need y'all to hold on a second. There is something outside that don't make no sense in the sky. Give me one second. I, really, this don't make no sense. I don't know what this phenomena is called when you're looking through cameras and you see shadows of things that don't belong there and you go and you look in real life and that's not there but it's there but it's not there and there's something wrong what I saw was something that looked like it's uh, remnants of the moon but it's not the moon uh oh captions are being missed try closing some applications I ain't worried about that let's do that and it is right like look look, look 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 ladies and gentlemen it knows that I be using a lot of programs I, I tax my systems resources because that's what they're there for I mean why would you get a computer that didn't have no systems resources now remember I told you that that little light that's in the sky when I went outside that light ain't in the sky well, it's now in another camera. Before it wasn't in the other cameras, now it has shifted to a different camera. The same light. Same light! But it wasn't there before, and when you go outside, it ain't there. But when I look in the camera, the light is there, and it's in the sky. Shouldn't be in the sky, ladies and gentlemen, because there's nothing in the sky. There is absolutely no light in the sky when I went outside, but on my camera, there's a light. Don't tell me what it is. I don't care. I'm just telling y'all about the phenomenon. Nothing but the phenomenon, like a phenomenon, like a phenomenon. White lines. See, Will Smith didn't, wasn't the first one to do it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to be letting you guys know we've been talking about our defrauded homeowners of America. We've been talking about our people who have signed up with Amera Legion and with the... AMCF organization what we needed to do because what the courts have a habit of doing is they have a habit of blocking people's access to court so I'm gonna let you know we will be filing something I will be having a person go directly to the court and file this for us on our behalf they're gonna we're gonna have all the paperwork done they're gonna actually walk in into the court file it we'll get a case number at that point pay attention at that point we're going to put the case number up on video and we're going to invite anybody and everybody who's got a mortgage to come into this lawsuit it will be against the federal reserve and the local federal reserve agents etc all for interfering with our access to the march 9 1933 act now what you all need to know and i need y'all to hold on a second while i show it to you ladies and gentlemen the Supreme Court has held that it is a rebuttable presumption that the Securities Exchange Act applies to your mortgages and or your notes. Let's go ahead and find that real quick. Give me a second. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, this is the infamous ChatGPT. What I told it is that the United States Supreme Court has held that it is a rebuttable presumption that promissory notes treated as mortgage-backed securities are actual securities if they do not have maturity dates are greater than nine to six months. And I asked it, can it provide me the quote from a particular case? Because I didn't remember what case it was. And it says, I'm sorry, there's no such case. And I said, you must be out of your cracking mind, you crackhead. Anyway. And it says, 
The classification of promissory notes as security is determined on a case-by-case -case basis, and whether the promissory note is security depends on various factors, such as the context in which it was issued. Additionally, it says the presence or absence of a maturity date is just one of several factors that the court considers in determining whether or not a promissory note is security. We don't care what the court has determined. It's not up to the court. The law determines what the facts are. So I told her you are incorrect, and I stated it again. I apologize for the confusion in my previous response. You are correct. The Supreme Court has ex uh, issued and addressed, uh, addressed the issue of promissory notes and their classification as securities in certain circumstances. In the case you are referring to is Rives versus Ernst and Young. Ernst? Who would name their child Ernst? That's, that's what happens when you hit your foot against a rock or a piece of metal. That's the hole that hurts. Anyway, in that case, the Supreme Court stated that the definition of a security under the Securities Exchange Act, hold on, the note in question, nobody ever said it was under the Security Exchange Act. They decided to say that. The note that was in question under the Securities Exchange Act included any notes unless the note has a maturity of less than nine months well remember go back and look at the any note section of the march 9 1933 act and it doesn't list that it has to have a maturity of nine months or falls within blah 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 now what the court said is that it's a rebuttable presumption however the court also noted that the presence or absence of a maturity date is just one factor in determine a particular note, no, the court didn't say that. It says, the court held the determination of whether a promissory note was security on economic reality of the transaction and that a note may be a security even if a maturity date is less than nine months. Hold on. Uh, I don't care about this blanket rule. So this is what I wrote it, y'all. I said the rebuttal to the presumption is that any notes as identified by the National Emergency Bank Relief Act of 1933 does not require a maturity date of less than nine months and thus falls within a statutory exemption. The Emergency Bank Relief Act of 1933 was a separate and distinct from that blah blah and I gave it the case so-called wannabe law. One second while we get it to answer the question. Answer the question, I mean idiot. Now, of course, I'm going to be correct again. <sighs> Based on the cases you cited, it appears that there may be an argument that certain notes and securities issued under the Emergency Bank and Relief Act are exempt from the definition of a security of the Securities Exchange Act of 1934, regardless of whether or not they have maturity dates. However, it is important to note, I don't care about important notes. I'm telling you what the law says. So I don't care about what the circumstances are because the March 9, 1933 Act doesn't care about these circumstances that it wants to remind me of. I didn't ask it for a reminder. So I'm going to do this right here. Okay. Exempted certain notes from the definition of securities and that Securities Act did not address the issuance of securities issued by the United States or agencies determining. No, I didn't say anything about notes and securities issued by some stupid United States. You didn't say it doesn't say nothing about no notes issued by the United States. Okay, now you notice it is still focusing on the Securities Exchange Act. So you're gonna give me back my. I'm gonna go back to the first answer, cause that was more akin to what I was looking for. Such as those provided by. It is important to note the determination. See, I, I'm not asking it about all of that. It, it's doing that on its own. <sighs> Thank you for providing more context and the information of promissory notes. So I, I, I'm not always, see, it's going to keep doing that. However, it's important to note stuff. So watch this. I, I got to do this, y'all. So y'all hold on. Wake up. Ladies and gentlemen, I just told the system that I don't need it to tell me about what's important. It doesn't get to determine what's important for me. I get to determine what's important for me, but it continues to talk about, eh, it's important to know. I don't give up about what they, it thinks it's important. Y'all hold on a second. It's going to apologize to me for its stupidity.
Oh, look at that. It froze up a second. I apologize for my previous response. Oh, look, it's always freezing up. It's just freezing up. I apologize for my previous response was not helpful. To answer your question directly, no. <sighs> there is no Supreme Court case that establishes a rebuttal for presumption of a promissory note. I didn't ask that. I said the Supreme Court said it is a rebuttable presumption. The Supreme Court held that a promissory note may be classified as security depending on the economic reality. I didn't ask it for that. I did not ask it for a commentary. Now, I am not aware of the specific where it establishes a rebuttal for presumption. Sorry, give me one more second. Wake up. Wake up. One second, people. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. We have the question. One second. Okay, this is the exact quote. And I'm wanting to find the issue of the rebuttable presumption. And you notice... It doesn't, this presumption may be rebutted only by a showing that the note in question bears so little resemblance to the classic security that it should not be regulated as such. And the rebuttal to it, that it bears resemblance to the so-called security, pay, 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 pay attention. It says, we hold that the note is presumed to be a security under the Security Exchange Act. Presumed to be a security. Well, no, the note is not presumed to be a security because we're under the March 9, 1933 Act. We're not under the Securities and Exchange Act. Why? How can we say this? Well, we can say it easily. Give me a second. Let's go here. So that y'all can see. Because they said that the Emergency Bank and Relief Act was separate and distinct from the Securities Act of 1934. That the farmer... This one right here, the Emergency Bank and Relief Act of March 9, 1933, oh, the, yeah, the former was not repealed by the latter. So the Security Exchange Act did not repeal the March 9, 1933 Act. So when the March 9, 1933 Act held that your notes, drafts, bills of exchange, bank acceptances, and trade acceptances were securities, then the Security Exchange Act is irrelevant. It did not repeal or replace it. The court held that the National Emergency Bank and Relief Act provided a lawful basis for the issuance of certain bonds and notes by you. Okay, this is a case where they did such. In this case, the Supreme Court noted that the Security Exchange Act of 1934 did not address the issuance of securities or obligations by the United States or its agencies. We don't care. It, it, it didn't matter. That's See, it says in this case they did not address it. We're not. We're not talking about... United States. So what I asked for it to do was this right here. In this case, the court noted that the Emergency Bank and Relief Act was a separate and distinct from the Security Exchange Act, and the former did not appeal, repeal the latter. The court held that the Emergency Bank and Relief Act provides a lawful basis for the issuance of bonds and notes, not by the United States. It had nothing to do with the obligations of the United States. It said it provided a lawful basis for the issuance of bonds and notes and bills of exchange and drafts and blah, blah, blah. So when you are doing a bill of exchange, then you need to be using this 2012 case out of the Northern District of Ohio. Now watch this. This is what y'all need to do because this is where we're headed, y'all, because a lot of people are going to jail because they're writing them promissory notes, but we have a lawful basis. Wake up. Let's go here. Sorry, I was copying, and I'm stuck right now because it ain't letting me even tap on the screen. So we can go back here. Wake up. I need six case sites that agree with the following.
and could you provide the quoted text? Colon. Okay, sorry about that. I keep forgetting I have to tap back on the screen. One second. <coughs> so I asked it for six case sites that agree with what I just put up there. So the Emergency Bank Relief Act provided for lawful basis for the issuance of certain bonds and notes out of the Security Exchange Act, not addressing the issuance of securities or obligations, and did not address the issuance of securities and obligations by the United States or its agencies. I don't care about that by the United States or its agencies. The Emergency Bank and Relief Act authorized blah, 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 and did not repeal or supersede the Emergency Banking Act's authorization. Okay, the Emergency Bank and Relief Act authorized the issuance of notes, and the Security Exchange Act did not address the issuance of securities by the United States or its agencies. See, I'm going to be getting rid of that part because that's not the quote that we are looking for we're talking about the fact that the security exchange act does not address the issuance of securities issued by you okay so please note that while these cases support the proposition that the emergency banking relief act provided a lawful basis for the issue and those they may not address specific context and issue so now i'm gonna get it to give me some more cases because that's not what i asked for okay and Okay, provided a lawful basis for the issuance of notes. Now, you notice it's not giving me that thing about United States and its agencies this time. It's giving me exactly what I asked for. And these are 1997, 2008. Okay, that's what I'm looking for. I'm not looking, and watch this. We got one more thing we need to do. Uh-oh, get back down here. Hold on, got to make sure that line is right there before I can do that. And then I'm going to ask you to verify. Please, V-E-R-I-F-Y for A-C-C-U-R-A-C-Y, question mark, space, enter. Because I don't trust it. So now I get it to... See, it says, additionally, each court held that the Emergency Bank Relief Act was not repealed by the Security Exchange Act. It has not been repealed at all. Ladies and gentlemen, this is what we're relying on. This is where we're going. This is where we're headed. We're relying on the Emergency Bank Relief Act and not the Security Exchange Act. And we're saying, wait a minute, it doesn't matter how you guys are trading mortgage-backed securities. Under the Emergency Bank Relief Act, my promissory note was tender because it was an agreement between me and Congress. And I accepted that agreement by my acts, actions, and my intentions. That's what we're doing. So, ladies and gentlemen, we are getting ready to bring forth a lawsuit of a different nature. But we're going in under this premise. Why? Because we have that right. And we will allow, after we put the case number up, for you guys to join yourself into the case. We'll create a document and all you got to do is fill it out because it'll have the pertinent information showing how you have been defrauded, showing how your note operated as collateral and security and that because your loan was approved under Section 414, Federal Reserve Notes was issued to the bank. You don't have to prove Federal Reserve Notes was issued to the bank. They have to disprove it. That's where we're headed. So y'all pay attention. I told y'all. I's got gotcha. you. All right, got to go. Y'all take care. Bye-bye.